Hey guys, welcome to Stiff TV. This is uh, Fest Hack, where we talk about uh, hacking film festivals. I'm Tim, I'm the uh, Stiff Festival Director. My name is Will, and I'm the Programming Director. My name is Warner Bhutan, and I'm the Communications Director. Yeah, so today we want to talk to uh, short filmmakers, and the kind of short filmmakers that your objective is to create a film that's going to do really well on the festival circuit. We know there's a lot of reasons that you might want to make a short film. Uh, you just might want to get together with your friends on the weekend and have a good time. You might have a really great story to tell, and you just want to get that story out there. But if you want to get your film on the festival circuit, that's who we're talking to today. We found this really nice article. Uh, it's written by Ivan Kander, and you can find this article on shortoftheweek.com. It's his uh, blog website. Uh, we'll also put a link to it down below. We'd really like you guys to you know, take a look at the article. We're going to talk a little bit about it. And the article is called 15 Things Wrong With Your Short Film. So. And so today we're going to go through each one of those, highlight a couple points, and uh, hopefully have some fun out of it too. And hopefully you guys will learn a few things. So uh, the number one on the list is your film is too long. <laughs> so. it's, it's a short film, right? Yeah, absolutely. And festivals in general, there, there's actually a really good article that we can also put down below uh, by a Sundance programmer. He says he doesn't want to see films longer than eight minutes. And while eight minutes may seem daunting, <clears throat> when it actually, when, when all comes out in the wash, most festivals will accept films that are under 15 minutes. However, it's a lot easier to program three eight-minute films as opposed to, you know, two 20-minute films. And beyond just the traditional component of timing for film festivals, you also want to make sure from a transmedia perspective that the film can be snackable and repurposed down the road for other venues and channels. Yep, and you're going to be creating this film to be successful, to be noticed on the film festival circuit. You can make it in any length you want, so just make it eight minutes or less, and that's really the, the key to success. And the flip side of that is that your film starts off a little bit too slow. So you want to sort of get right into it. Yeah. Will, do you want to sort of add something on that? Well, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that if you only have eight minutes to play with and, and you only have eight minutes to actually tell your story, then you want to get right into the exposition of that story as quickly as possible. But don't get bogged down. Don't get into explaining away your story. Give a small, quick explanation of what the story is and the story that you are about to tell. You want to really grab someone's attention in the first five seconds. Just like with feature films, everybody has Netflix, and how many times in the ten minutes you watch a film and you go, oh, and you turn it out, you don't even give it a chance. It's With a short film, it's shorter. Something needs to happen in that first five seconds. We watch literally hundreds, if not thousands of films every year. We get four to five to six hundred submissions of short films, and we watch every single one of them. And what we find is, is that within the first two to three minutes, we know whether or not that film is going to be a good story, whether or not it's actually going to be a successful story, and, and how that person is actually telling it. How many films have we seen over the years that start, like the first 30 seconds of the film, you're basically looking at an alarm clock, and it's you know tipping from 6.59 to 7, and then it goes off, and the person's rolling. The first 30 seconds of the film, is, is you're doing basically nothing there. Right. And to our third topic, which is that your opening credits are too long, so well, I'll add to the, the I don't think clock. you should have opening credits at all. No, kill the credits. Yeah. If, if we don't know, if you don't have James Franco in your film, if, if you don't have Tom Cruise in your film, if you don't have Julianne Moore in your film, we don't know who these people are. So putting their names at the beginning of the film is literally a waste of your own time. Yeah, throw up a quick, uh, the, the title of the film for, you know, a couple seconds and then that's it. I, I don't care, you know, you're not a famous director. We don't care that the film is by you. We don't want to see that. Just, yeah, cut it completely. Yep, absolutely. Getting into sort of the nitty gritty, then we can move on to bad audio. Yeah, your film has bad sound. And this also gets into don't submit your film uh, before it's finished. We get a lot of films submitted to us. There's like a note, hey, we haven't quite finished the sound yet. Finish the sound. Make sure your audio is perfect before you start submitting to film festivals. And there are exceptions to those rules. If you're an alumni of our festival, oftentimes we'll make uh, an exception for someone who hasn't necessarily quite finished their film yet because we know your work already. Um, however... If, if you've never submitted to us before, make sure that you're showing us the best work you've done. Yeah, and put the time into getting the sound right. Seriously, yeah. do it. Don't think, oh, we can fix it in post. You're shooting on a busy street or there's a plane flying overhead. It, do things like unplug the refrigerator, uh, turn off the air conditioner. Yep, all simple, quick tips and tricks that you can use to increase the quality of your film 
merely by providing good sound. And have a real sound guy. This like uh, have a PA holding a their iPhone to record the sound. We actually kind of saw something like that recently, and yeah, don't do that. Yeah, it's probably not a good practice. At least not one to make a habit of. Another good practice is not hiring actors maybe that have never been in front of a camera before, yeah. which leads us to number six, which number is five. Number is your five. Film has bad acting. Bad acting. Uh, this is not the kind of thing where you you got to recruit your mother and your little sister and and that kind of thing. Uh, do a real casting call, bring in some real actors. Yep, exactly. I mean, basically what it comes down to is we see so many films from young filmmakers that have hired their friends and have hired, like Tim said, their family members to play roles that are not necessarily age appropriate for the character. So make sure that you, when you're casting your film, actually do a casting call. Send out, like, in fact, you know what? Hire, if you've got the money to do it, hire a casting director. Because that person is going to make a huge difference in the final outcome of your film. Yeah, we see it a lot, especially in like the, the films that are coming out of film school. You know, you're grabbing your classmates, and you've got somebody playing a father and a son, and they're they're both really the same age, and it, it just looks ridiculous. And what can also be ridiculous, moving on to number six, is lacking originality. <laughs> Do some research into yeah. the genre and the, the sector in which you're filming something. Take some time there. Make sure that your film hasn't been done. I mean, there's a million, t there's, there's 25 million films out there that have been made, and if you're making a film that is in any way, shape, or form similar to other films that have been seen in the past, there's no way that a festival is going to accept your film. It, and it just, yeah, we see a lot of the same themes. It, anything that starts with like a hitman, we see this like over and over again. And also the trends, you want to be on the forefront of the trends. Uh, like, so you need to be on the forefront of that. I know it sometimes it takes time to make a film. You think you're going to get it done in a couple months and it takes it 18 months, a year and a half, but try to be on, on the front of those trends. Uh, number seven, I think could uh, definitely sort of gather some steam here, which is a uh, black and white film for no reason. One yeah. person up here has uh, some personal thoughts there. Well, it, yeah, it, it absolutely <laughs> drives me crazy. I like it. Kind of goes back to the originality. Do we really need to see another film noir film shot in, in black and white on your your camera? Um, for a, a while ago, when people were still shooting on like sixteen millimeter film, they were doing it because it was so much cheaper to, to get the black and white and develop the black and white film. But now we're shooting on, on video cameras. We just don't want to see black and white film. It's not necessary unless it actually helps to support the story. Yeah. And if it's not supporting the story, then you should be shooting in full color. It doesn't make your film artistic just because you shot it in black and white. No. In and fact, if <laughs> anything, it's just confusing to yeah. us. Just sort of nod off there because characters being boring is number yeah. eight. Number eight, your characters are boring. <laughs> you just haven't done uh, the, the... They're doing things because the, the characters are supposed to do it that way. The stereotypical thing, uh, really flat dialogue. Your, your characters are saying things that, that they're just kind of supposed to say, not things that are really developing their character. Yeah, take a class in writing, you know. Um, study people around you, you know. Think about what, how people talk to one another, how people use dialogue, and if you can create scintillating characters, then you already are halfway to the point of making a great film. And on the flip side, number nine is your film has interesting characters, but they're not doing anything. So characters, you know, even if it's a, it's a short, you still need to have character arc. There needs to be things that, that are changing that they're, they're working towards. Right. Yep. Each of them should have a purpose and a real role, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. There should never be, even your background characters should have a purpose for being there. You know, I mean, if you have a little old lady walking down the street in the background and it just happened to be an actual little old lady walking down the street in the background you're only going to confuse your audience and more so your festival programmers. Yeah, go through all the, the effort to create this really interesting, you know, like roommate or something, and they just go to their bedroom and you never see them again, and you're like, what was the, the point of having that, that person there? Yep. Yeah. And along the lines of having a point in what you're filming, keep in mind that uh, you don't want to necessarily get rid of things that you're not going to use in the film. You, sometimes we each think it's more satisfying to make something and then not film it. So Yeah, so number 10, you your film was more satisfying to make than it was to watch. You had a, a great weekend hanging out with your friends, mm -hmm. making a film, uh, but it, it just doesn't come through. Yeah, and oftentimes, like, with the digital video age that we're currently in, and we are in the golden age of digital video right now, um, it, it's easy to get bogged down with the equipment that we're using. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't care if you shot it on your iPhone or if you shot it on the Red or if you shot it on an Ari. It doesn't matter to yeah. us as long as it's a good story. That's all that matters.
Yeah, absolutely. And, and if that means separating the editor, you know, even if you have a limited staff, having someone else edit, having someone else look at your take, you know, then do it because sometimes you're not going to want that footage in there, even if you're emotionally yeah. connected to it. Not everybody is Kevin Smith. Yeah, it's very hard for for directors who are also the writer and sometimes the actor to be objective. Yep. So. There you go. Uh, and so that gets us to number 11. Your film is good considering. Con well, I shot it on an iPhone, or uh, we made the film, the whole film for 10 bucks. Yeah. It, we don't really care. We want to make, we want to have a, see a really great film. Yeah, we, we, we want to see good storytelling, and that's uh, essentially what every programmer is going to tell you, is if there is no story, there is no film. Yeah. Which moves into number 12, which is that you made your film for a 48-hour film festival. Yeah, uh, right. you made it in 48 hours. hours. You, you did it as a class project, something like that. It was fun to do that. You got a, a screening either in front of your class or, or at the, the festival, but it doesn't make it, it's not going to make it on the festival circuit. <clears throat> make a real film to send out to the festival circuit. Really show your best work. Take your time. Do it right. They're great training grounds exactly. for everybody involved yeah. across the board, yeah. but not necessarily the kind of thing that you're going to need to really to nurture a story. No. Right. Oftentimes the, the whole the whole 48 hour thing is just a construct for learning how to make a film and learning how to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's more about technique than it is about storytelling. Yeah. So and so be careful that you're not so technique heavy that you're forgetting about story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, make your film, have fun, and then, then make a real film for the festival circuit taking your time and, and getting it done. All right, so number 13 is something that you don't watch other short films. It's something that we watch literally at least 500 short films a year each, and we've been doing it for years. And, you know, we have a festival and a theater, and there's always a lot of empty seats, and I'm like, where's all the other local filmmakers? How come they they don't, they don't really have the interest? The short film is, is something that, the, it's an art form that the people who are creating it are creating it to get to the next level. They're not actually fans of that art form. Right. They all think their their short film is going to get noticed. Uh, they're going to get some money to, for a feature, and then after they make a feature for a few hundred thousand dollars, they're going to be off to Hollywood. That kind of level. Right. So they're not looking back. So get out, support your local festivals, watch films online. Uh, so many people tell me, you know, oh, I'm pretty sure my film's going to get into Sundance, and I, I ask about some of the other Sundance films, like compare it to one of the other Sundance films from last year, and they, they, well, they haven't actually Great. taken the time to even research what kind of films Sundance are showing. Total, and, total as you crickets. mentioned, Will, yeah, Will mentioned this the other day, which is that you know, there's 5,000 odd festivals in the country, so mm -hmm. you know, find the one that's gonna be good for your audience and your narrative, and be open to that, and then know what's going on around your community. So yeah. you're not like the Portlandia or SNL skit where there's one person in the audience and everyone else is on stage. Yeah. And on the flip side of that, number 14 is when you're listing numerous laurels on your website or your yeah. electronic press kit or your social media. Along the lines of festivals, you know, what is it? What is the, the clout of carrying all these laurels that for which, you know, no one knows? We know what festivals are that matter. Other festivals know what matter. Do you want to add something on that? Yeah, the, like little mm -hmm. small kind of regional festivals. Kind of keep it clean. You don't need to put every single... I even see some places where... They, they were nominated in different categories, and so they've got six different laurels for the same little festival that nobody's ever heard of. Right. And, and this is especially about that, that con short film corner, mm -hmm. which is, it's just, it's a library, you just pay money to put your film in there, it, it doesn't have any meaning. Anybody who thinks it has meaning isn't gonna help your career anyways. If you send us your film and you say that you've been to the con short film corner and you feel like you're sending us something that's a, an actual credit or a laurel, it's not. Of those 5,000 film festivals out there, a lot of them are scam festivals. They're submission collection festivals. That's all they do is they collect submissions and then they take that money and they put it into putting on, you know, probably a decent little festival. But when it comes right down to it, and this is something that's necessarily going to get into everything, but, you know, you, you need to be, be very discerning about what festivals you're actually applying to. Yeah, taking a look at the festivals, the, the types of films that they're showing, you know, we're a, a great festival for, for up-and-coming filmmakers, but there's other festivals they only want extremely polished, like, already, you know, kind of established filmmakers. So. And so number 15 is actually my favorite, which is that you're making a bland profile short doc. Yeah. So, again, what is going to be sexy about your story? What's going to separate you to your audiences and your market? You know, something about your grandma and her voyage to France in 1959 isn't that interesting to a wider audience. So, do you guys want to add? Yeah, when we're seeing that? these profile documentaries, I want to see something like I have never seen before. Yeah. Uh, there is kind of a big movement to document, you know, some of your family history or your, your neighbor or follow your dog around with the camera, things like that. And but that's not necessarily the place for a festival. Yeah, I mean, it's these, not these a festival films film. aren't, aren't festival films. Make these them, are, these share films. them with your family, put them on yeah. YouTube. But, but Send them on your listserv for your email. Don't waste your money sending them out yeah. to, to festivals. No, not at all. Not at all. all right, so those are 15 things. 
And uh, keep tuning in. This is Fast Hack. Every week we're going to tackle a different subject, helping you get into festivals, helping you be successful at festivals, and move towards distribution. All right, you guys, we're hanging out at our favorite spot here in Seattle, close to our office in the International District, the Eastern Cafe. And uh, this is where we come for meetings, just drink beer, hanging out. They have the best happy hour in the neighborhood. So hit subscribe so you can tune in to all the latest news from the festival circuit, how to get into festivals, how to hack the festival circuit. All right, see you guys there. Thanks. Perfect. Oh, I'm doing it now. I'm eating. Yeah, no, one more. Subscribe. 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 Subscribe to Stiff TV.